The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, has made some far-reaching proposals that would bring an end to the attacks on Nigerian traders doing business in Ghana. During a legislative diplomacy bilateral meeting with Ghanaian lawmakers and some top government officials, as part of his ongoing visit to Ghana to resolve the crisis, the Speaker advocated for an amicable settlement of trade disputes through arbitration and fair judicial processes. The Speaker also said he would be glad to champion a law to improve the bilateral trade relations between Nigeria and Ghana, noting that citizens of the two countries remain brothers and sisters. He called on Ghanaian authorities to revisit the component of the law that requires a capital base of $1 million for businesses to start, saying as Africans, Ghana should encourage brotherliness. The Speaker said the relationship between Nigeria and Ghana is one of the most important in Africa, especially at a time the world is battling the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic impacts and pressures on public coffers and service delivery systems are weighing heavily on all. It is clear that this is not a time for conflict and disagreements, but a time for partnership and solidarity. We're joined in the studio by Dr. Dakuku Peterside, a former governorship candidate on the platform of the APC in River State. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you very much, too. What's your reaction to this situation with Ghana? Is this latest effort by the speaker going to yield results in your thinking? I believe it will yield results, and it's a very good move. Um, the problem all along is that we've not been very proactive in our diplomacy. Uh, what is the issue in Ghana? Um, what you're seeing in Ghana today is a cumulative effect of many years of uh, some sort of aggression against Nigerians, which Ghana has consistently denied. Recall that at some point in time, they shut down the Nigerian embassy in Ghana. And the argument they made then is that... Um, Nigeria did not formalize or did not conclude all her documentation concerning that piece of land in Ghana, in Accra. Now, before then, too, they had shut down um, some other property belonging to the Nigerian embassy in Ghana. They also put up an excuse that that was a dispute, a private dispute between the Osu stool and the uh, Nigerian embassy. And so there's been this hide and seek kind of game between Ghana and Nigeria for some time, despite the fact that they have long-standing historical ties. You know, in common man's parlance, the, the Ghanaian, the average Ghanaian is Nigeria's closest brother in West Africa, or if not in the continent of Africa. But that's not what's playing out. But of course, you know that what led to this immediate one is some law uh, passed by the Ghanaian parliament which empowered the Ghana Investment Promotion Commission uh, to charge anybody who is about to set up a retail business $1 million as a deposit. You know, if you look, think about retail business, now there are three things that you need to look at. Nigerians own most of the retail businesses in Ghana. You know, Nigerian businesses um, make up like 50% of businesses so in an interpretation that that law was specifically made to you know thwart the effort or is the word now thwart the effort of nigerians doing business in ghana would that be too far-fetched I, I don't think so the reason is simple the other businesses in in ghana are owned by indians lebanese from what we've heard and from our own experience of visiting ghana very often so if you talk about African community, Nigerians are clearly the dominant player. So you know that any law made in that direction will obviously affect Nigerians in a disproportionate manner, you know, compared to other Africans. Cumulatively, all the other Africans don't make up to 10%. Uh, do you think that they are really willing for dialogue as it's being pushed by our team? Let, I mean, that's currently oh, I, I, talking I think they them. are willing. Now, the, go the Ghana government has taken three important steps which you can't ignore. The first one is that the president or the, from the presidency, uh, they've asked the Ghana Investment Promotion Commission to suspend that policy for now until they resolve all the issues surrounding the... Uh, the uh, and that's, that's a far-reaching decision from the highest authority in Ghana, and you must clearly admit that. That's one. Now, two, is that they've also shown willingness to engage with Nigeria to explain the position. Uh, I know that the Ghanaian, either the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Ministry of Information, you know, gave a detailed account of what they think happened and gave a commitment 
that they are willing to engage with Nigeria. That's the second thing they've done. The third is that the, the shuttle by Speaker Femi Bajabia Miller, uh, who met with his Ghanaian counterpart, and the admission by the Ghanaian parliament or members of Ghanaian parliament that they are willing to look at the law again. You know, every country uh, protects its sovereignty. And so when countries say, listen, we can look at this law again, we can do something about it, it shows goodwill and it's something... Being willing and actually doing something, because this is not the first oh, time we're having issues. Uh, it's not the first time we're having issues with uh, Ghana and even our neighbor, uh, South Africa. Uh, do you see um, a positive, a real concrete action, aside from the one that you mentioned, in the nearest future? If you were to give a time frame, what would it be? Well, for me, I, I see, um, unlike South Africa, uh, I don't want to say this. You know that Nigeria, um, if the severe relationship, it will significantly impact on Ghanaian economy. Nigerians are very active in, in Ghana. Nigeria, um, Ghana is some sort of gateway to Nigeria. Ultimately, most of the things they produce there might end, find its way to Nigerian market. Nigeria is a huge market. Um, most of the properties in Ghana, a number of good, I don't want to say most, good properties, number of properties in Ghana are owned by Nigerians. Nigerians, some sort of fuel the Ghanaian economy. I don't think uh, it will get to that point where they would dare Nigerians in that dimension. The economic consequences will be there, and I don't think they will like it. So I believe that Ghana is sincere, that they're willing to engage with us. Um, they may not like the courage, the daring nature of Nigerians. They may not like the aggressive nature of Nigerian businessmen. Uh, there's a general talk on the streets of Ghana that Nigerians are taking over almost all their businesses. Nigerian banks that does, are, doesn't, doesn't that say something for the people? I, isn't it better to learn from the people who seem to be doing things in a specific way than to look to bring them down so you can excel? How, how can we, because that doesn't seem, it, it's not peculiar to Ghana. It is not. It's not peculiar to Ghana. How can we, this spirit of brotherhood that Bojabia Mila mentioned, how can we really truly foster it in such a way that even when um, a Ghanaian is in Nigeria thriving, our first thoughts would not be to shut down his business. Shut down his business. Get out of here. You're very correct. At the continental level, um, there appears to be some progress. But this progress at the continental level, uh, we're, we're not seeing uh, so much of it at intracontinent, at intercountry inter inter level. Uh, mm -hmm. At the continental level, I'm sure you know about the African uh, Free Trade Continental Area Agreement. Um, all of those things, at the highest level at the continent, there are efforts to integrate trade in the continent, at the, le at the level of the continent. But among countries, we are not seeing much of that. But again, um, you know, it's not a one-directional thing. At some point, Nigeria closed her borders to uh, her neighbors. Yeah. And that was not in the best spirit of the brotherliness. Uh, brotherliness you know? So uh, countries react based on the economic circumstance and the way they understand the economic dynamics. You know? So it's not, it's not, it doesn't make sense for us to wake up and just condemn everything Ghanaian or everything right. Ghana. Uh, we should seek to understand what the issues are and to find solutions. I, li I like to start this conversation by being open-minded by being optimistic, by trying to explore options, and let's get a middle ground. Let's see what happens. I agree with you clearly yeah. that there is an attitude uh, towards Nigerians all yeah. over Africa, not just needs to in change. Ghana, not only. Let's in let's, let's see what finally comes of this meeting uh, with uh, their counterparts. I am optimistic Ghana. that there will be Thank some you. improvement. We will not be there. Uh, so that nobody gets me wrong here. <laughs> we right. will not be there, but there will be improvement, improvement in, in our relations. relations. And in, it is for the common interest of both countries, not just for Nigerians alone. It's Thank also you. for the interest of Ghana. Thank you very much, sir, for coming on the news and sharing your thoughts. Thank you for listening. Thank you, our listeners.